Hello everyone, for those of you who watched my video series where I built a full stack web app and asked to make a video about general concepts in full stack web development, such as databases, ORM, CDNs, and etc. This video is for you and as for anyone that is just getting started and wants to become a full stack developer. Although if you're looking for a hands-on coding, like practical experience, or if you want to have a full stack web app project on your portfolio, I do recommend checking out my other video where I built, it's like a video series where I built a full stack web app and the link for that would be in the corner and also in the description down below. As I mentioned, this video is just a general overview of uh, topics. So starting off with our first topic, it's databases. Sorry about the light here, I'll move around the board once I get to this part. But the first thing I want to mention about databases is that this is where we store our data essentially. As you might have heard, there are two kinds of databases. We have a relational database, which is also known as a SQL database. And we have a non-relational database, also known as a NoSQL database. So let's take a look at relational databases. The reason um, its name is relational, it's because the data is structured in um, tables where tables also store relations to each other. So the database would just be constructed as a multiple or a single table. So to take a look at the table, we have um, different like columns and rows are essentially like how much data it is storing and columns, the names of the columns are like what kind of fields do this um, data have. And the example of uh, today, um, a relational database would be PostgreSQL. Moving on to non-relational databases, there are several types of non-relational databases and they're each used for uh, different purposes. One of the two, like one most popular ones are the key, va uh, key value pair. Uh, relational uh, non-relational databases and also document. So key value pair is basically if you are familiar with the hash map data structure, the way the data is stored in the hash map would be very similar and we fetch the data using the key. Um, of course there's different like hashing functions, some could be more complicated, some could be simpler than a hash map, but to imagine essentially that's what it is. We use um, hashing function to get the data. And one like in the three standard for this is DynamoDB. Um, there's also a document um, one which is it stores um, data as like form like documents or uh, like a JSON object. And here is an example that we would return this kind of data. And one of the popular ones is MongoDB. So now like where to think about where do the databases live? Um, they usually live on some kind of a server. And this server, as you can see here, it could be stored in the cloud using AWS or GCP like cloud providers, or you can also for the purposes of testing, store the data locally on your computer and run it using something like XAM for SQL databases or MySQL Workbench. So now let's discuss how do we interact with a database and how do we like get data from the database. So for that, we need the query language. Most popular query language today is SQL and SQL gives us structure to get the data. For example, to get all the data from like users table in here, we would write a query, something like select um, the star sign, which is, means all from users. And then we can add a where condition and define what condition is. There's also another concept called ORM, which is another way of getting the data from the database. ORM essentially means object relational mapping. So what it does is that it takes, takes the data, um, doesn't matter if it's in tables or if you have like um, document oriented data, databases, it takes the data from there and maps to the objects using the language that you're using. 
So um, yeah, it's a technique that lets you query and manipulate data from a database using an object-oriented paradigm. Uh, when talking about ORM, most people are referring to a library that implements the object relational mapping technique. So that's where the phrase um, ORM essentially means. Uh, ORM library is completely ordinary library with, written in your language of choice um, that encapsulates the code needed to manipulate data. So you don't have to use um, SQL anymore. You can directly interact with the object in the same language that you're using. For example, um, these are the two libraries. SQLize is mostly used for MySQL databases. And uh, there is another one, Prisma, which is a little bit different from traditional ORMs. The reason being is that, as I said, ORM helps you map um, data from the tables to your objects. What Prisma does is that it lets you create Prisma schema. And once you have that um, schema and you update the schema, it's essentially like a source of truth for both your client side and the backend side. So you don't have to do the mapping, um, all the object um, mapping, not mapping, but like schema comes from there. Um, so no like relations needed. But for using ORM, you just, there's usually a lot of like libraries out there and um, you download the library, add it to your project, um, you call the library and then usually comes with functions that let you run um, all like query similar to here. So pros of using ORM is that you write your data model in one place and share among like client and backend. The cons of it are that it could lower the performance for more complex queries till like um, SQL is more powerful. So now that you have your databases and you decided how you want to query your data, the next step is to think about how would you pass the da this query data from databases to the client. So the way to do that is using APIs, as you might have heard, it's uh, when you're building a um, template or a component and you need to get the data from the backend, you need to this term called the API. There are two types of, I guess, not really types of APIs, but like two ways you can approach creating API and using API. And this is a big discussion today in the programming world. It is REST APIs or GraphQL APIs. So um, REST is more like traditional way of creating and using API where you have a URL endpoint, main URL, for example, let's say you're integrating Stripe, right? They're one of the main services is the payments API that they're providing. Um, so they provide you with the main URL and they have also endpoints. So endpoints is the way of getting different data. So let's say if you want to just to get like list of all your users, it might be dash users, transactions, refunds, versus GraphQL initially works off of one endpoint and GraphQL is not as much as like um, type of a, um, API, it's more the way of approaching the API. So over there, the Objects are represented by nodes. It's very similar to if you are familiar with like graph data structures in um, computer science. So objects are represented by nodes defined using the GraphQL schema and the re relationship between objects is represented by edges in the graph. Um, each object is backed by a resolver that accesses the server's data. Um, so yeah, GraphQL is also a query language as specification and a set of tools that operate over a single endpoint also using HTTP like REST does. It does have a upper hand because you can define what data you want to get. For example, let's say you call users endpoint here, it returns you the list of all the users coming with fields like username, um, 
user maybe address, but let's say you're calling an API using GraphQL and you're not interested in getting user address. You just want the username. So you would call the users, but you also specify the fields you want to get back. So it um, has a less load on the client side, so you don't get all this data and you don't have to then afterwards do all the modifying of the data on the client side. So it creates like higher uh, performance. Okay, now that you have your API defined, um, how do we call an API? The basic way to just call an API is using, if you're using like um, JavaScript, then you, there's a fetch function which fetches the API, but there's also other libraries that help you facilitate the process as in like fetch the data from the API, maybe, maybe cache the data or store it in a state. So you have it locally. It's way of doing it in a more um, organized manner. So some of the libraries that like, it's kind of like a client management state management frameworks that help you do that with the GraphQL, R, Apollo client and Relay. So they provide the functions to do different kinds of queries. Um, Apollo client is a one that I've been using before. Relay is like next one on my list of like technologies that I would like to uh, learn. If you also are interested more um, technologies and newer tools that I'm learning, I also have a video about it, which will be in the corner. Um, so yeah, check it out um, if you're interested. And Relay is created by Facebook and it is known to be less flexible than Apollo, but it's more like highly opinionated, but it's true. It's um, known to be better for more complex queries than Apollo clients. So I'll definitely check it out and update you guys. As for there are some frameworks that are not really tied to a specific like programming language like GraphQL, they could be used with any kind of APIs. These are Redux and React Query, and both of them are used um, within Re um, React framework. So Redux, uh, both of them are like state management um, tools, which also where also you can define and make API calls and store it in the state. And last but not least, um, the client. You For this one, you need to decide what language you want to use, whether it's JavaScript in the past there used to be uh, more like PHP which is but that's like um, usage of PHP is going now now and uh, if you're using JavaScript you can use different libraries for example my favorite one is React although React does come with limitations such as um, routing for routing you need to use a third party module or static page generation also server side uh, rendering and uh, SEO management is not very powerful in React. And for these reasons, there are React frameworks which you can use such as Next.js and Gatsby.js. If you're interested in the Next.js, I do have a tutorial also where I'm building like a movies app using Next.js. So that's a good start if you wanna check it out. The link of that would also be in the description. Uh, but yeah, these um, two and similar frameworks usually come with like benefits of increasing performance, improving caching system, and making it possible to store the assets in um, CDN or content delivery network. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll be making more videos where I deep dive into these concepts, also talk more about like system design and architecture. So please make sure to subscribe. And I will also be continuing to build uh, full stack web apps using the video series. Thank you.